Hey, what's up guys? Synapse here. In this tutorial, I wanted to introduce Cinema 4D R16. One of the new features is called Motion Tracker. Motion Tracker lets you track 3D objects into a scene. Uh, first thing we do is go up here to Motion Tracker, select the Motion Tracker, and uh, if you select the Footage tab, you can select which footage you want to use. And I want to use this battlefield footage right here. This is a really cool scene. There's lots of action going on. And it's pretty much a simple pan. Should be a good one for comparison. All right, so right now I'm going to go from frame 0 to frame 1500. That looks good. I can click the full footage button to make sure we've got everything there. Uh, we can automatically create the background object, which is awesome. That's going to help us later down the road. Normally, this is something I'd have to do manually. Already saved a ton of time right there. And uh, starting at the beginning here, I can just click Auto Track. And everything being default, Cinema 4D just starts the tracking process. And you can see down there how fast it's going. And it's just slicing through this 1080p 60fps footage. Like a hot knife through butter. Was that too much? Yeah, probably went too far there. Enough of that, the tracking's done, and how well did it do? I don't know, it looks like it did pretty well. So, so yeah, it looks like the default settings just work. Okay, we can go in there and fine tune things a little bit. Okay, so we've got all these points in here. What we're gonna have to do next is run the 3D solver. So let's go ahead and run that, and let's see what happens. And we're off. We're running the 3D solver and Cinema 4D is thinking hard and long. And uh, it's using quite a bit of track points. You know, I bet we could solve this scene without so many track points and make it even faster. Now this scene is interesting because there's a lot of movement in the scene. But Cinema 4D seems to do a pretty good job at ignoring that. And just picking those track points that it can use the most. Okay, it is finished. If I hide the background here... You can see this wall right here as the camera comes, pans by, it pans by that first wall, then opens up into the main room and you can see all those track points back there on the ceiling, the background, and on the floor. Uh, let's grab onto the text object here and we'll just move it right over in front of the camera and uh, we can rotate the text object, kind of bring it into the scene. It's going to be epic. Wait. It already is. All right, so as we move through the scene, the text is perfectly tracked in the scene. I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, but let's say that we want to make it right next to the flag. We can actually find a point that's near the flag. And I can bring the text object in here, and I can put it right underneath that point and zero out the coordinates. right at the flag. Uh, now one of the things we could do is we can add a motion tracker tag to set the position of the entire scene. So I just add the tag right here and uh, I can actually make this the target, say right there. And what that does is that makes this point the absolute center of the entire scene. And we do something similar where we set the plane of the entire scene. So I'm gonna add a tag right there and uh, then what I can do is I can make a selection. Uh, so we can create the plane. I'm going to choose this object here, this object here, and maybe this object way over there. So the plane is created. I click Create Plane button here, and a plane is created. It matches the scene. Perfectly loving it loving it. All right, so let's flip over here to Adobe After Effects And let's do a comparison here and see what track cameras got for us uh, Just clicking track camera on the scene. It just starts working uh, really no Configuration and it'll just start working right off the go the After Effects track seemed to go a little bit faster uh, and the After Effects track is actually phenomenal on this scene. And basically what we have to do here, if we want to create a plane, we have to create a solid and a camera. And you can see the solid object right there. And basically every object you create 
will be exported into Cinema 4D. So basically that's what the workflow is like. So how does After Effects then compare to Cinema 4D? One of the things we have to consider here is that After Effects doesn't really have a lot of advanced features uh, for tracking. Okay, and then and I know they're working on that. I feel like the camera tracker just works and doesn't really need a lot of configuration. You just press go and it works. Cinema 4D, you can do a bunch of cool stuff uh, with masking. You can use these tags to really customize the track and uh, you just have a ton more options. In conclusion, I'm gonna be using Cinema 4D to track my footage, whether I use After Effects, a third-party plugin, or another program like Boju, all of my tracking data ends up in Cinema 4D in the end. So now I can skip all of those extra steps and just do the track in Cinema 4D. All right, that's it for this video. If you liked the video or you found it helpful, please subscribe to the channel and please give the video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you think. All of those things, along with sharing the video, are ways to support the channel for free. Good luck and have fun.